quick thing before we get started. The sound quality on this episode might not be the best, and it's for two reasons. One, we're recording in a hotel room, and I'm near an airport right now, so if you hear a 737 zooming by, you'll know why. And second, I went to the dentist earlier, so my mouth kind of hurts, but wanted to get this episode out because this week's Trapital article was interesting. It's gotten a lot of strong feedback. I can't say it was a surprise. I've written about streaming several times, and any time that I write about streaming, and specifically Rap Caviar, everyone's ears tune up. And it's because this playlist has had a tremendous influence over the past few years. With almost 12 million followers, Spotify's flagship hip-hop playlist has been known to break artists. It's been a source of talent for A&Rs and others to find potential artists that they want to sign, and a good general litmus test for which artists are hot, which artists are not. It's no different than someone tuning in to see what songs are playing on the radio. But it's been this way for a while. I feel like 2016, 2017 were the years that Rap Caviar truly blew up. So it's a bit odd that now, this summer, summer 2019, is when all the other digital streaming providers are stepping up their game and trying to launch their own rap caviars. Apple Music just redid theirs. It's no longer A-list hip-hop. It's now Rap Life. Not the most exciting name in the world, but it's going to be headed up by Ebro Darden, who's also a host on Hot 97 and has been working with Apple Music for quite some time. And on Amazon Music side, they recently launched a free tier and they now have Rap Rotation, another fairly generic name. And you also have Tidal, who has been pushing thorough hip hop, their flagship playlist for some time. That's been lead up and curated by Elliot Wilson, the host of the Rap Radar podcast, and also does the Crown interview series for Tidal. So this brings up a few questions. First, how successful do these competing playlists truly think they'll be? And do they actually think that they'll be able to catch up to Rap Caviar? I can tell you right now that Apple Music and Tidal do not have a chance at being able to match where Rap Caviar is. You have to be a paid subscriber in order to use Apple Music. You have to be a paid subscriber in order to use Tidal. Because of that, it's going to be much less influential, and the playlist itself has to serve a different goal. If you are an outsider of Apple Music, you're an outsider to Tidal, before you can even engage and have a true idea for the identity and what these playlists might stand for, you have to be willing to spend $9.99 a month or whatever the price is in your country in order to use that service. These DSPs are using these playlists as a means to help attract or retain customers. That's the primary goal. And of course, once they get people in the door, there's creative things that they can do. They can try to replicate some of Rap Caviar's strategies, but it's just not the same. Rap Caviar is available for both Spotify's free and paid tier. So that means that even though a customer is still technically on the free side of Spotify's freemium service, they have exposure to what Rap Caviar offers. So let's say that even if they are a paid subscriber to Apple Music or Tidal, but they still have a free Spotify subscription, they at least have awareness of how Rap Caviar operates and can compare which songs are on which. When it's time for Spotify to try to monetize Rap Caviar outside of its streaming service, which it often does with Rap Caviar Live, which is its concert series. They also have the Rap Caviar Live Museum fans can attend, and it's a way for Spotify to generate money from the Rap Caviar brand, whether you pay for a subscription or not. A majority of Spotify's listeners do not pay for membership. This is why Rap Caviar has an effective and strong competitive advantage. Its size and the structure of Spotify itself has effectively created a moat. It's harder for other playlists to be able to have the same influence. First, let's talk about Apple Music. Their primary goal is to expand beyond the iPhone. The iPhone has been one of its biggest strengths. 
that's why they've been able to surpass Spotify for the number of paid U.S. subscribers, which is a pretty impressive stat all across the board. But it's also fairly limiting. Most of the world outside the U.S. doesn't have iPhones. They have some other Android device. So how does Apple Music insert itself onto devices that it isn't automatically pre-installed on? The place that Spotify is in music is very much where Apple and iTunes were 15 years ago. What is Apple Music's role when it's no longer the market leader that can dictate things? And they now have to try to insert themselves in markets where they may not necessarily have as strong of a hold. But the good thing that Apple does have, though, is data. For instance, one of the examples I brought up in the article was that Travis Scott does very well in North America. He streams very well in Eastern Europe, but may not resonate in South America. But meanwhile, Young Thug is pretty standard across the board. Why that is, your guess is as good as mine. But being able to understand these differences is important. Playlist consumption still accounts for nearly a third of all music listened to, so it definitely matters. Next, let's talk about Tidal. The good thing about Tidal relative to most of the other streaming services is that it already has a target customer. You go ask any of your friends that has a Tidal subscription, I guarantee you a couple things are true. One, they're really big fans of Jay-Z or Beyonce. Or two, they really like the fact that it supports the artist. These are the hip-hop fans that believe in voting with their dollars. They are fine stepping away from the status quo of what everyone is doing because they know that their money is going towards causes and things that are important. You can also have better understandings of what type of music this person might listen to. There's a pretty solid connection towards conscious rap. Those are the things that can resonate and leverage the fact that there is a known consumer and a known listener that will most most benefit and appreciate what title has to offer. And last, let's talk about Amazon and rap rotation. One of the biggest opportunities for them is to team up with Alexa. There are a hundred million Alexa powered devices that are now in households and vehicles across the world. That's pretty insane. And a lot of it is because Prime Day, they essentially give them away. If you're not taking one, then you almost seem like a member of counterculture by not spending $15 or whatever the price is to put an echo in your home. There is clearly a cross-promotional opportunity. You can pick up the trends of what's happening in tech right now with these big companies. Both Amazon and Apple want to both control the devices that you have and control the content that's consumed on those devices. And second, By doing that, it then makes it easier to promote and advertise products to you. That's one of the reasons why its new rap rotation playlist can be a cross-promotional opportunity with Alexa. At the beginning of July, Amazon Music released a new video to officially launch rap rotation and they had a number of big name rappers in there going around this house party the house party looked dope they did a good job with the trailer but at the end closing words are hey alexa play rap rotation on amazon music and that's the goal they want to show that you can combine the two of these get these people to be exposed to what rap rotation is and what it stands for that's how you get exposure leverage the entry point whether it is your software or your hardware and hopefully you can get folks to convert over time those are some of the things that each of those major digital streaming providers can do to catch up with rap caviar And I think we made it through this episode without any big planes coming through. I'll have to go back and check the audio before we finalize. If you've enjoyed this Trapital podcast, please tell one friend about this podcast. Go ahead and go to Trapital.co. Check it out. Stay tuned. And I'll see you all next week.